Hi, Michael here from the Climate YouTube channel Distilled. I'm taking over for Simon while he's on paternity leave. I'm also here to tell you about what I think might just be the most overlooked climate solution in the world. Now, when we typically think of climate solutions, I think most of us think of one of two categories. First, we obviously think of the popular stuff, like solar panels and wind turbines and electric vehicles. And this makes sense, given the amount of news coverage these solutions receive and the large role they'll play in decarbonization. And then people also think of the futuristic cool stuff. You might think of room temperature superconductors that could pave the way for efficient high-speed rail networks works all around the world, or maybe you think of fusion power plants that could provide cheap, abundant clean energy for all. Or maybe you think of direct air capture plants that could suck gigatons of carbon out of the sky. Come to think of it, I guess all the futuristic stuff is also the most controversial. Anyway, what we generally don't think of are the boring but incredibly important solutions that we need to decarbonize our society. In some cases, these solutions are already all around us. Think LED light bulbs, which are dramatically more efficient than incandescent bulbs. Or in other cases, they're nascent, like zero emissions concrete. In this video, I wanna convince you that one of these boring climate solutions is actually really cool and incredibly exciting. I wanna make the case that if we wanna avoid a climate catastrophe, we should all pay a little bit more attention to the humble heat pump. At an individual level, a heat pump powered by renewable electricity can cut a person's carbon footprint by more than 50%. Globally, this technology can reduce billions of tons of emissions each year, all while saving people money on their utility bill. And they can do all of this while providing air conditioning in a rapidly warming world, literally saving lives. But before looking at all these benefits in more detail and how these things work, we have to look at how our current way of heating and cooling buildings got us into such a mess in the first place. For the vast majority of history, people were either too hot or too cold most of the time. But humans are a clever bunch, so we eventually figured out how to solve this problem. We invented fireplaces, furnaces, and eventually air conditioning. Now this was great for living standards. You're probably sitting in an air conditioned or heated room right now as a result of these inventions. But the problem is that space heating and cooling takes a massive amount of energy. And today, most of that energy is powered by fossil fuels. According to the International Energy Agency, buildings are responsible for 30% of all energy use. Globally, the energy used in buildings is responsible for 26% of energy-related emissions. And heating and cooling alone are responsible for 40% of those emissions. That means that heating and cooling buildings is responsible for 10% of all emissions globally. That's as much pollution as all passenger vehicles in the world. In order to reduce these emissions, we need to do two things. First, we need to make all buildings way more efficient. The reality is that today, most buildings just waste a ton of energy. We can improve efficiency by adding insulation, upgrading windows, and installing smart thermostats, to name just a few opportunities. But even if we dramatically improved energy efficiency in buildings, that wouldn't be enough. We'd still be burning huge amounts of fossil fuels each year, resulting in far too much carbon pollution. So we also need to swap out all fossil fuel appliances with electric alternatives. Now by this point, I'm sure that somebody's already paused the video to write me a comment and let me know that electricity is produced using fossil fuels. And generally speaking, that's true today, but it doesn't have to be. As you can see in this graphic, there's a huge variance in the emissions intensity of electric grids around the world. Some countries like Norway and France run on much cleaner fuels than others. These countries show that it's possible to build clean and reliable electric grids. If we can electrify everything and then build clean grids all around the world, we can cut most building emissions. And this is where heat pumps come in. At the simplest level, a heat pump is an appliance that can both heat and cool a building. It's like an air conditioner that you can flip into reverse if you wanna heat your room. But unlike a fossil fuel furnace or boiler, heat pumps run on electricity. This means that they can eventually be powered by renewable energy. The fact that heat pumps can also provide air conditioning is a huge benefit. Today, billions of people living in warm climates don't have access to air conditioning. The third major benefit of this technology is efficiency. Fossil fuel furnaces and boilers typically run at 90 to 95% efficiency, which might sound pretty good. That means that they waste just five to 10% of their energy. But heat pumps are 300 to 400% efficient, which means that when you put one unit of energy in, you get more than one unit of energy out. To understand how heat pumps achieve this efficiency, let's take a look at how these things work. One of the key things to understand about heat pumps is that they move heat rather than generate it. In cooling mode, a heat pump moves heat from inside your home to the outside air, leaving it cooler. Refrigerators and air conditioners do the same thing. That's why if you put your hand behind a refrigerator or next to the outside unit of an air conditioner, you'll feel hot air. This is heat that's been moved from one place to another. But what makes a heat pump different than a traditional air conditioner is that this process can be reversed. On a cold day, a heat pump can move heat from the outside air into your home. And that's kind of crazy because modern heat pumps work down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 Celsius. So how is this possible? 
The second law of thermodynamics tells us that hot always wants to move to cold. It also tells us that the ultimate fate of the universe is heat death. But that's beside the point. Heat pumps take advantage of this law. To simplify things a bit, heat pumps have both an inside and outside unit, connected by tubes with a refrigerant inside. In cooling mode, a heat pump uses the refrigeration cycle to get a refrigerant really cold and pass it through coils in the inside unit. Then a fan blows the warm air in your room over those cold coils. Because the inside air is warmer than the coils, some of the heat moves to the coils and the refrigerant. In this way, heat is pumped out of the building, leaving the inside air cooler. In the winter, this whole process is reversed and heat is pumped from the outside air into your home. At first, this is a little hard to wrap your head around. If it's 10 degrees outside, how is there any heat to pump into the building? But here's the thing, even on a cold day, there's energy in the air. At a microscopic level, heat is basically just molecules bouncing around. And while they might be bouncing around slower on a cold day, they're still moving about. In fact, there would be energy in the air all the way down to negative 459 Fahrenheit, or negative 273 Celsius, the temperature known as absolute zero. Heat pumps take advantage of this too. On a cold day, the refrigerant is cooled to a temperature even colder than the surrounding air, enabling it to absorb heat as it passes through the outside unit. When it passes through the inside unit, the heat is released since the refrigerant is warmer than the inside air. And it turns out this is an incredibly efficient way to move heat from one place to another. By using just a small amount of electricity, heat pumps can use just one unit of energy to move three or four units of energy. And this is what makes them so efficient. So why aren't we using these things to heat and cool our buildings? Ultimately, it comes down to cost but not necessarily in ways you might expect. In 1938, on the eve of World War II, Swiss engineers installed Europe's first heat pump in Zurich City Hall. The next year as the war began, Germany cut off coal exports to Switzerland, driving heat pump adoption. A decade later, coal shortages led the UK to explore heat pumps for the first time too. In the 1950s, Parliament discussed heat pumps as a potential solution to the country's falling coal stocks. But the heat pump market didn't truly take off until the oil crises of the 1970s. As OPEC cut off oil exports to America and European countries, policymakers looked for ways to save energy. And they found a great solution in heat pumps. During the crisis, governments around the world passed policies pushing heat pump adoption. In the US, heat pump sales grew by 500% in the 1970s, from 100,000 units sold per year to 500,000. But by the 1980s, energy prices all around the world had fallen. And as a result, gas furnaces and boilers have been the cheapest heating option for the last few decades. However, some countries continued to invest in energy efficiency, even as energy prices fell. In Japan, a country with almost no fossil fuel reserves, the government continued to invest in heat pumps. Today, 90% of homes in the country have a heat pump. Recently, Europe entered a new era of energy scarcity as Russia invaded Ukraine. As energy prices skyrocketed, so did heat pump sales. In some countries like Poland and Belgium, heat pump sales doubled in a single year. In other countries like the UK, France, and Germany, sales grew by 40 to 60%. And so the first reason why we don't use heat pumps more is because generally speaking, fossil fuels are cheap and abundant. But when we look at the cost of anything, we can't just look at the monetary price. One reason that fossil fuels and the appliances that run on them are so cheap is because we overlook the true costs they impose on society. And this is the second reason why heat pumps aren't more popular. Fossil fuel heating systems create a lot of pollution and this pollution creates an enormous cost on society. Poor air quality results in worse productivity, hospitalization, and millions of deaths each year. And that's just the short-term impact. Over the longer term, this pollution results in climate damage that's measured in billions and trillions of dollars. Some countries recognize this sooner than others. In the 1990s, Sweden passed a carbon tax to put a price on pollution. This tax has been one of the major drivers of heat pump adoption in the country. Today, 40% of homes in Sweden have a heat pump, the third largest share in Europe. So why don't more countries have carbon taxes like Sweden? After all, if they did, we'd have more heat pumps and less pollution. This brings me to the third reason why heat pumps aren't more popular, the global fossil fuel lobby. In 2022, fossil fuel companies received a staggering $1 trillion in subsidies from governments around the world. In many countries like mine, these companies have effectively bought the government. This makes their product artificially cheap, but it also enables them to fend off competitors like heat pumps. A few years ago, cities in the US like Berkeley, California, passed laws banning fossil fuel heating systems, citing their carbon pollution and damage. The city wanted homeowners to install heat pumps instead. Fearing a broader trend, fossil fuel companies convinced lawmakers in 23 out of 50 states to ban these bans, a political tactic known as preemption. This is one of the most direct attempts by the industry to slow heat pump adoption. 
but it's not the first. For decades, gas companies have been spreading misinformation about heat pumps. If you've ever heard that heat pumps don't work in cold climates, you can probably thank your local gas company. These companies have even paid TikTok influencers to spread this myth. But make no mistake, today's heat pumps work down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius. Just ask Scandinavians in Norway, Finland, and Sweden, the three countries in Europe with the most heat pumps per capita. Another myth the fossil fuel lobby has spread is that the electric grid can't handle heat pumps. There are plenty of countries with both high penetration of heat pumps and renewable energy. Norway, the country with the most heat pumps per capita in Europe, also has the cleanest grid. I'll link to a great Mythbuster by Rewiring America with more on this topic below. Today, just 10% of global space heating needs are met by heat pumps. In order to avoid a climate disaster, we need to bring this number closer to 100% over the next few decades. It's a daunting task. But with action from people like me and you, it's absolutely possible. The easiest thing that we can all do is talk about heat pumps with our friends and family. Today, most people simply don't know that this technology exists. We need to change that. The second thing we can all do is get politically active. The only way we'll get our governments to take on the fossil fuel lobby is by electing climate leaders and then holding them accountable. Finally, the next time your furnace or air conditioner goes out, consider installing a heat pump. In many places, your local government will give you thousands of dollars in rebates to do so. Unlike many climate solutions, the technology for heat pumps has been developed and tested for decades. Now, it's up to all of us to get this technology out in the world. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about other climate solutions, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Distilled. Every couple weeks, I publish a video exploring how we can build a more sustainable world. I've covered everything from solar water heaters to bike lanes to geothermal. If you head over there, be sure to say hello in the comments. I'd love to welcome you to the community.